Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson and today I want to show you a very cool 3D scanner that Funk3D sent over for me to review. It's made for tiny objects and jewelry, which is pretty cool. This will only be an intro video because I really want to know what you guys want me to test about this machine. If you have any ideas of things to scan and things to, uh, yeah, things to try this with. So the scanner is made to scan really, really small objects, jewelry to be exact. So that's super tiny things. Now I don't have a lot of jewelry or know people that work with it, but I used to work at the company that sold Formlabs 3D printers in uh, SLA 3D printers. And occasionally those would be sold to people that are doing digital jewelry and printing the molds and then burn them so they can cast the uh, like silver and gold and stuff in those forms. So until the full review of this machine, I'll try to connect with some local designers and see if they have any ideas or any designs that they want to digitize. Because a scanner like this would be fantastic for those designers that want to work with digital files, but maybe they only have the handcrafting. They don't maybe know how to do digital sculpting and, and stuff like that. So for them to be able to take an original, some design that they have shown customers, customers want and appreciate, they can then 3D scan that design and they can then uh, create a digital master, which they can then produce several files over to, to kind of get some, some small scale serial production of jewelry. I think that's really cool how you can combine the old handcrafting with 3D scanning and digitalizing the files and then printing them out and stuff like that. Since it's supposed to be so detailed and so accurate, maybe we can find some other places to play around with it. But before that, let's just have a look at the specs. All right, so those are some really impressive specs, but how does that actually translate? I mean, what does even 0.06 millimeters mean in, in resolution? This here is a paper clip. It's a tiny, tiny part. I have some putting here, I'll get you some close-ups. And here you can see the actual zoom in of the object. Notice how I have sprayed some contrast spray on it. So this is during the scan, this is sped up by 10x. But it shows the different angles that you're scanning and here's the final results. I mean, this is insane, the details. This is 11 millimeters wide. Uh, but as you can see, when I'm using the contour spray, it actually puts some dust on the model and you don't see that in other types of scanners. But here you can see on the close-ups that we actually see the grains of the spray being translated in the scan. That's, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> okay, so before we play around even more, uh, let's just have a brief look at how it actually works when it's scanning. So this scanner is a stationary scanner. It has everything built in. You basically put your objects on this tiny vise or this plate with several locations. You can see they're even marked. The machine will then rotate your part, as you can see here, and it will use some structured light using the DLP projector. And the structured light will create a pattern on the object that two really high resolution zoomed in cameras will have a look at. And then it creates different 3D images from different angles. What's nice about this is that the scanner actually turns the part around for you. So you don't have to think about moving the scanner or moving the part around, the scanner does all that for you. So all of these 3D images, they are basically just 3D data, 3D points. And at the later stages in the scan, you can combine these into a mesh file, so a SDL or OBG file, for example. Now, if you're used to 3D scanning or have heard about it before, you might know that the files are actually only meshes. You don't get like a finished CAD file that you can take into Fusion or SolidWorks or anything to, to actually work with. Um, you get a mesh file, so SDL and PLY and OBG, for example. Usually that's a bad thing because it means that you don't have like the technical uh, capabilities working with a solid model. But, but in this case, I think it's actually pretty good. It, it's, it's good enough for what a designer needs. So for example, if you have a, a jewelry model, you can take that mesh, the high resolution mesh into a sculpting program. So basically you take the original, the, the real world object, and then you can start to sculpt on that. So you can, in, instead of actually grinding on the part, you can try out your design and, and save different versions where you sculpt it differently. So you, you take your base, 
let's say base design and then you add different types of features using the sculpting tools which I think is much more um, connected to how designers might usually work with clay and with files and different tools to add material and grind off material. I think that's much easier than to learn a organic CAD modeling software. Now I'll probably do much more of this kind of sculpting in the full review but I just want to introduce it as a concept. One really interesting video that I want to do early next year, so make sure you subscribe for that and ring the bell down below, is to actually 3D scan the unbuilt Warhammer 40k figurines. So these are really tiny plastic models, you can see a few of them here. Uh, they're usually around like 20, 20 millimeters tall. I'm pretty sure that this scanner can scan those objects and actually allow me to create copies. So when I, I can then 3D print my own figurines, and maybe even do some reposing. So with that I mean that in for example Blender you have tools that you can rig a character and then animate it using bones. So basically I should be able to take one of these characters, add bones to all the arms and the head and then make them either run or just repose. So I get 10 models in this kit I think but in theory I could then 3D print unlimited amounts of different positions aiming at different locations or turning the head around or even adding details to these small figurines. So that's a separate video I think that's gonna be super cool. Hey I can't leave you with that I think we should at least try some of these parts and see how we can actually scan them. So I have loaded up this vise here, tiny vise, I don't even think you can see it from this distance so let's zoom it in a little bit. This here is one of the head of these characters of these figurines. It's around 13 millimeters long and the smallest details on the front are less than a millimeter in diameter. So let's check out how this scans. Okay, I, I think I have to stop there. I, I just want to show you and tease you a little bit about the scanner and I really want to have your ideas on what I can and what I can try out for the full review. So I'm gonna continue working with this over the holidays and hopefully starting in January somewhere I'll be able to finish the full review. Uh, so really looking forward to ideas of what to scan and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other cool ideas to um, to do with the Warhammer figurines. Hope you enjoyed this, let me know what you think, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is probably gonna be the last one for 2020. Whew, what a year. <laughs> so uh, I'll catch you guys on the other side. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, I hope to bring a ton of more tech like this to you guys and showing you how it works and eventually reviewing it. So with that said, Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.